All right, welcome to the July Market Watch. So I skipped June just like I did back in 2020, and I didn't really do that on purpose. It was more so because there was only one major thing I wanted to talk about, but also I was completely overwhelmed at work with an annual thing we have to do. And so I was working like ridiculous hours, like a lot of 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. There were some 4 a.m. to 8 p.m. kind of days. It was absolutely ridiculous. And so I was planning to get this out uh, as soon as I started my vacation, which is a pretty much a week from now. But I was like, I have one more day before my vacation starts. Let's go ahead and get this out because there was a huge announcement literally last night. And I was like, okay, I can't wait anymore. I've got to get this out. But first things first, look at my dude right here. I'm so excited about this. So I'm going to go ahead and pre-order this as soon as I get done with this video. Um, there also There already was a... There was an articulated Doom figure that was released as part as um, on the Bethesda store, and it was really expensive. It was like 200 something dollars. And then there was an articulated uh, Doom Eternal figure that I think was NECA that made that. You can get that for like 20 bucks. Um, but not nearly as nice as this. This is a Figma series um, Doom Marine. Nothing to do with Zoids, but it was just so cool. I was like, I've, I've got to show this. Um, so the big thing I wanted to talk about in the June Market Watch is... Shortly after we got the pre-orders available for the HMM Rev Raptor, which has been highly anticipated, we finally got the finished product pictures and the pre-orders available for the Raven Raptor, which we knew was going to be the variant to the Rev Raptor. And the Raven Raptor already has the, um, let's see if we can get a better picture of it, <clears throat> the Pile Bunker unit already attached to it, which is pretty cool. So... Um, this thing looks amazing. I put in my pre-order for this as well. And so what they did is, even though this is kind of a slap in the face to the people that already pre-ordered the Rev Raptor, they released the Rev Raptor, or they released the pre-orders for the Rev Raptor. And then they did the pre-orders for the Raven Raptor and the, uh, Pile Bunker Unit, uh, Customized Parts Kit, which means that you can order either just the... You can order just the Raven Raptor, or you can order the Rev Raptor and the Pile Bunker set separately. But I think the Raven Raptor is slightly more affordable to get the Pile Bunker unit already with it. The cost equals out to be almost the same, but the Raven Raptor is slightly more affordable. And I think this color scheme is just amazing. But if you guys want to get a Pile Bunker set for your regular ass Rev Raptor, definitely go ahead and do that. Um,. Yeah, I think this is awesome. It is available right here on AmiAmi. I love this uh, gold right here. I don't think that it will be quite this bright on the finished product, but it does look really good. I like the uh, neon green eyes. Just look absolutely incredible on um, <clears throat> against the rest of the color scheme here. So, um, yeah, definitely looking forward to that. I have that and the regular Rev Raptor pre-ordered. Because I figured they're going to be really small. They're going to be probably about like that big when they're done. They're not going to be very big. So um, they're not going to take up a whole lot of space in my collection. I can have them kind of alongside the other dinosaur type Zoids in my HMM display case. I don't know if I showed it off or not. I have an entirely separate HMM display case now. Um, but the big thing that was announced just last night is we finally, finally have it. The HMM Liger Zero X. So after... And some of these pictures still look like uh, 3D models. It doesn't. Something about this doesn't look quite real to me. I don't know what it is, but I guess it is. I'm trying to look closely. Yeah, I guess it is the real thing. Um, something that I kind of noticed about this is that I mean it does look good. They have definitely taken the Lego Zero X parts and sort of modernized them and bring brought them into the HMM. Uh, design sensibilities quite nicely. Um, they look, some of them look almost identical to their motorized counterpart pieces, namely the um, this part right here and this part right here back here with the little things that spin and how the blades come out. But the blades seem to have the same level of articulation, if not greater, as their original versions because you can do crazy stuff like uh, like this, which I just think is so cool. And, um, of course, these things flip up, the translucent parts flip up, and the little uh, blade things pop out, which is pretty cool as well. But the uh, the legs are kind of skimpy. There's not a whole lot of armor 
you can see even the empty peg holes down here where the armor would attach and there just is no other armor for the zero x to attach down there so it has this awkward look of having this really bulky shoulders with no armor on the rest of its legs so i don't know how much i like that but i think as far as like adapting the liger zero x as a <gasps> cast system customized parts kit for the Liger Zero HMM. They did a fantastic job. Here's how you can get this. So the rumors are finally over. We finally have clear answers as to how you can actually buy this. So it was just like I theorized where you have this right here is the complete in-box Liger Zero X kit. So it has the body of a Liger Zero underneath with the armor already in the box. We also have the Liger Zero Empire HMM Markings Plus version reissue and the Liger Zero X cast system customized parts kit separate. So we have all three of those products launching. And from what I can tell, it looks like the Empire Liger Markings Plus version may also be a Kodo store exclusive again, which is kind of lame because it, it was originally, that's why it was so hard to get. But not every store has it available for pre-order. It's kind of the same situation as like the Gojula's Gunner and that special um, Saber Tiger thing we had. So Ami Ami and HLJ do not appear to have the, the uh, Empire Liger Markings Plus version, but they do have the straight up Liger Zero X. It's a little bit, uh, it's actually not that expensive. Uh, it's right about the same as any other Liger Zero would be, so... Definitely go ahead and get your pre-orders in for that now. Um, let's just go ahead and browse AmiAmi Ami here. So, of course, we have the uh, Zero X and the Raven Raptor. Red Raptor is still available. Um, you can still put in a pre-order for the Fang Tiger, and it should be out um, this month, I believe. The, fa the Fang Tiger should be coming out. Um, Pile Banker Customized Parts Kit is there as well. The uh, Death Stinger ZS should be shipping out now, and I actually have a... I actually have a picture of what the box art looks like for that that I'll be putting in post um, here in the video, so you can get you guys can see what the box art looks like for that. It looks absolutely fantastic. Um, the Genosaur reissue should be shipping out this month as well. <clears throat> Haven't gotten any emails about that over here on Amiami. The um, Geno Breaker and the Red Horn are gone. The Gun Sniper and the Shadow Fox are still available, and. Uh, those weird mystery box uh, wind-up zoids are gone as well. Um, looks like a lot of the Xeno Rex stuff is gone now as well, which again is fine. <clears throat> Zero Grease, this is gone. Iron Kong Yeti is gone. Um, there's something on page one that caught my attention though. Uh, never mind. Okay. So there's also a bunch of these Zoids Wild Zero acrylic stands. I haven't really shown these off yet. Um, but for those of you who are fans of Zoids Wild Zero, and you should be because it's the best Zoids anime since the original series, um, the, like, since Chaotic Century and New Century, this is the, the best one since then. Got little acrylic stands of the characters. I'm not a big fan of this art. I don't think this art is particularly flattering to these characters. Um, but this is still pretty cool, so. Alright, over here on HLJ, um, Liger Zero X is available as well as all the other ones we just talked about. That um, EX0 is an art book that I talked about. Um, and uh, so that's available for pre-order as well over here. The uh, Death Singer ZS is in stock. You can go ahead and purchase that here for a pretty good price if I do add. Um, a price that makes getting the bootleg, um, uh, what do you call it, the Supernova Death Singer uh, irrelevant. And um, the Zero Fantoth is still in stock even though nobody seems to want that. <clears throat> uh, what else we have here? The uh, Genosaur is gone again. Mulgaset's still in stock. Uh, only four left in stock for the Godos Former Republic version. You might want to jump on that. Saber Tiger's still in stock. Darkhorn. Um, pretty good stuff here. I noticed as well the, the Cannonball is back in stock. Um, I would highly recommend picking that up because this is a really awesome kit from Zoids Wild Zero that I could not recommend enough. Um, less than 30 bucks, I would definitely recommend picking that up. Um, over here in the USA Gundam store, I, I highlighted this because this appears to be the only place that I found so far that you can get the uh, Empire Liger for a affordable price. 
So I guess my question is, do I get this and the um, parts kit, or do I go ahead and just get the um, Zero X in and of itself? I think, honestly, I want this and the Zero X complete kit, because my problem is that with the Hasbro Liger Zero X is that this Empire Liger armor goes basically to waste. You can't have it in both modes at the same time because it's just two different armor sets for one Zoid. So I think I may actually bite the bullet and order this here. But the um, the Liger Zero X armor by itself is kind of expensive. It's another $40 on top of that. So you're looking at well over $100, probably closer to $115, $120 after everything is put together for just the Liger Zero X to buy it this way. But you are effectively getting, you know, it'd be the same thing as if you bought the regular Liger Zero HMM and then you bought the, um, what do you call it? Any of the other armor systems with it as well, though I'm pretty sure when I bought the Schneider earlier this year, it was definitely not $40. Um, USA Gundam Store also has, like I said, the, um, the Supernova Death Stinger, um, 130, which I, I know I made fun of my local hobby town for selling it for that much when it was originally like 80, but it is what it is. Even though it's, I don't support the purchase of this kit because it's not official. Um, it is in high demand by a lot of the fans. So this is a good place to get it. And then it would appear that all of the other kits that are listed here on the USA Gundam store are kits that the, that Kotobukiya is licensing out to those English distributors like we talked about. So this is an official store that is able to buy these directly from Kodo for distribution in the U.S. And so we have um, DCSJ, Raven Raptor, Deathstinger ZS, all these other new kits coming out. And, and it looks like they're bringing back the uh, 2020 Blade Liger as well for distribution in the U.S. And you can pre-order all that here on the USA Gundam store, which is pretty cool. Anyway, any further, I uh, just wanted to go ahead and show off this uh, box art for the Deathstinger ZS. It looks pretty cool. Um... Pretty close to the box art from the original version of the, the motorized uh, Death Singer ZS. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. Anyway, um, this right here, I wanted to look for these on eBay. So you will see that uh, here in a little bit. Um, these are... I don't know what these are. I, I've seen a picture of them, this picture. And I, I wanted to try to track more of them down. But it says they're made by Tony, Tommy, and they're clearly Zoids. But I don't know if they're, like, some kind of weird bootleg or something. But, like, if you look at them, like, clearly there's a Dimatron and um, that looks like a Trooper Zoid almost or, like, a Godos. Like, they're clearly from the very early era and they're just, like, cartoonized versions and it's really funny. And uh, so we're going to try to see if we can find any of those. So let's move on over to eBay. I want to look for the uh, Yamato Zoids. So these are um, articulated figures just like the uh, Haganai Works Blade Liger. And I've only ever seen them in person one time. And it was when the USA Gundam store had a booth in Chattanooga, Tennessee for the uh, for Kanuga. And they had a pretty decent, so this was back in 2018, and they had a pretty good selection of Zoids at that time. <laughs> And I don't think I bought any at the time because there weren't any that really appealed to me. Although in hindsight, I think they had the um, I think they had the Raven Geno Breaker, and that I should have bought that at the time because now that thing is insanely rare. But yeah, so these are like die cast articulated figures, and uh, I don't really have any good photos to show right now of what they look like outside of the box. But they have really interesting box art there, and they appear to be quite expensive. Apparently, there was the Shield Liger. The Shield Liger DCSJ, and then there was the uh, Beam Cannon set separately for the Shield Liger to turn it into a, you know, Shield Liger DCS just without the um, black color scheme. So these are insanely expensive, no big surprise there. Those are literally the only ones on eBay as well. You get the uh, Masterpiece Shield Liger in here at some point, you get some of the other uh, motorized and action figure ones. But yeah, this is pretty much it for the Yamato ones. Um... We also have, I was looking for this particularly rare Zoid as well, the 3-0 Iron Kong. So anybody that knows anything about this Zoid knows that it's pretty rare. Um, I think it's hideously ugly. I don't like the look of it at all. Um, apparently that listing has already ended. <laughs> That's interesting. So the listing was there when I did the search, and now it's already gone. Um, but just to kind of show off what this thing looks like, it's a radically different design 
of the Iron Kong has mostly the same colors, but it has this very differently shaped head, which I think is is criminally ugly. And it has these saw blades all over, which is a pretty cool concept. Two cannons up in the shoulders. So it's almost like a third-party reimagining of the Iron Kong. Um, I think it's hideous. I uh, the three zero. I honestly think the three zero shield liger is pretty hideous as well. Not a fan of it, but it is insanely rare. So good luck getting your hands on that. So <clears throat> at my local game store, of course, there are several of local game and nerd shops that I love to support. Uh, Wing Condition Games is where I get a lot of card game accessories from. Uh, it's where I got my Gojo's Giga from, actually, and it's where they had an HMM Saber Tiger not too long ago. But the, what what few rare games they have left now are insanely expensive because of all of the buyouts and all of the scalping and the market just inflating like crazy over the past year with COVID and all that. And so... All games are more expensive than they were, but in particular, certain consoles have become a lot more uh, collectible and desirable by collectors, Um, the GameCube being one of them. So it's no big surprise that Zoids Battle Legends has inflated in price. So they have a copy of it there for like $80. And I remember back in 2009, I think it was, when me and my brother first got our copy of it, we got it for like $25. At um, it was play and trade at the time, I believe, because it didn't have the official. It had like a fake printed cover on it, and uh, then I later got my own copy of it, which was a smart move because later when I moved out, I needed my own copy, which I did the streams of this past year, and uh, that one was like forty dollars when I bought it. So Win Condition had has a copy right now of Zoids Battle Legends for like eighty five dollars. Let's see how much it is online. <laughs> so, um. Not quite as dire as you would expect. It's still inflated, but not that bad. So this one is untested, and basically all that tells me is a clever way of saying it doesn't work, and don't uh, don't hold me responsible for what, when you find out that it doesn't work because I didn't test it. Um, that's what that tells me. So pretty low ball price, but if you know it doesn't work, then don't buy it. Obviously. Also, I love the new for $20 old uh, GameStop sticker there. That's just just amazing. Um, here is one for $65 with a stock image. It's probably a bad idea. This one for $60 with an actual picture of it is probably not a bad idea. Um, here's one of just the disc for $50. Um, again, we don't know if it's in its original case because it's a close-up shot of the disc. Um, just just forget about it. Like, if you're trying to get... Um, this is pretty good. This is $41 for it incomplete. Um, so it doesn't seem like Zoids Battle Legends in specific is way overinflated, but just give it time. I mean, if it's GameCube, forget about it. Like, you're not gonna... You're not gonna find it. It's never gonna go down in price ever. Unless something happens to the game market to kind of undo the swing of what has happened in the past year with COVID inflating everything they're just going to continue to go up. Like, there's nothing is going to bring their price down. Uh, it's the same, and it seems to be uniquely the case with Nintendo games, although there are some PS2 games as well that are starting to go up there, but PS2 games seem to be a lot more plentiful. It seems like there are certain consoles that are in, like, the collectible range, and sort of GameCube has sort of entered into that spectrum a little bit in this past year. So, um, and of course, the... This is not the case in Japan, where games in Japan are pretty much always at a, a constant value or a more respectable uh, value. There's no scalping or buyouts or anything like that in the Japanese market, it, it would appear. So the Japanese uh, Zoids Battle Legends, uh, Zoids Versus games, and um, Full Metal Crash and that kind of thing are have been a pretty constant price for a while. Um, so I wanted to look for Robostrux Zoids, which is, I believe these were released in Europe and the U.S. Um, in the 80s and was the only, the only way you could get a, a Zoid in America in the 80s because any word even called Zoids, but they have, God, this packaging is just the most 80s looking thing I've ever seen in my life. It is so 80s. Um, there's a Gordox, which of course is a a Gordos, and, uh, it's complete, you know, unbuilt, $365, that's a big yikes. This one is, um, uh, Gyzak, the Scorpion one, and it's called Stang, 35, um, 
This one's called Brox. It seems like they tried to put an X in the title every time they could, which I appreciate. Um, it's like how they put a Z in the title every time they can with the uh, Zoids related stuff. Um, this one's pretty cool. So this is, I mentioned this in the Gojless review, the um, OER Zoidzilla review. This is a Robostrux Gojless called uh, Terox, and it has a pretty cool and unique color scheme. Um, and if we continue to look down here, we have incomplete uh, Robostrux Zoids, including a lot of spare parts. And then this right here, uh, Bat Batlar, is one that uh, Brad actually found at uh, McKay's up in Tennessee. So I'm going to do a video on this pretty soon. He actually has this and did not pay nearly that price for it, thankfully. Um, but yeah, so it looks like there are little loose Robostrux Zoids out here. It's just if that's the niche thing you want to record, uh, uh, you want to collect. And then this is pretty cool right here. So um, the, uh, what is it? Sal Salamander, Terramander, and uh, Crack the Prince of Darkness are called uh, Radox in uh, Robostrux. Again, another short one word name with X in it, <laughs> makes sense. Um, this is interesting right here. So this is allegedly a Robostrux Panther. I don't think that's accurate. I think this is a Hasbro uh, Hellcat or Attack Cat. I don't think that's accurate at all. Um, but that's neither here nor there. Um, let's go over to uh, Buy E via Yahoo Auction Japan and see what they have over there. So uh, the Yamato Shield Liger DCSJ over here, uh, it's still insanely expensive. If you want to pay $235 for it, that is out there. Of course, these are auctions, so they're likely to go up. But yeah, these things are basically impossible to find. And I also searched for the Koenig Wolf because I was trying to see if I could find a Koenig Wolf with a sniper rifle. That's like one of the things I want more than anything for my Zoids collection is... Um, you know what actually I need to look for as well? Um, see if I can spell this right. Garyuki. Ah, come on. <clears throat> Probably just misspelled it. Search for features. I don't know why this thing does not want to complete my. Uh... Oh, for God's sake. That's interesting. The soundtrack for Fusers is on here, which I can't imagine is all that good, if I'm being honest. And then what looks like a uh, a DVD set of the series. That's interesting. Anyway, um, yeah, so I couldn't find a uh, Koenig Wolf with a sniper rifle or anything like that, but the Garyuki is like the one and only other kit that I really care about finding this motorized at this point for my collection. Um... So I just did a generic search for customized parts and uh, came back with almost nothing. So two of these are HMMs. These are upgrade parts for the Geno Breaker and for the Berserk Fury. I think these are the, the chromatic parts that um, just make them look a little bit cooler. I don't think they do a whole lot else other than that. And then we have the um, Buster Cannon set for the Shield Liger to turn into a Shield Liger DCS like I talked about. For the Yamato one, I actually, I have one of these, and I did open it, and I did build it, and put it on my Hasbro Shield Liger. I showed it off in a previous video. I did not know it was worth that much money, though. Holy crap, I think I got it for like $40, maybe? And then the only other one they have on here is, um, they call this the Active Shield Kit, and it looks like it can go on a variety of different Zoids, and this is just sort of a weapon rack. This weird uh, banana clip thing right here is a different type of missile pod. Just a couple of different weapons. Um, the thing, I think they show this on a um, hammer rock and the uh, snipe master there, which seems pretty appropriate. So, All right, well, that is going to be it for this month's market watch. So you guys definitely get up there and pre-order your Zero X. I'm going to do that literally right now as we get done here, and I will see you guys next time.